The video of the ascent of the lunar module shows many problems which give it little credibility. The first anomaly that everybody has noticed is that we can't see the plume of the ascent engine. Of course the Apollo believers have made up bullshit excuses for the absence of this plume. But there will have more trouble to find excuses for the next anomalies. Then at the top of the video, we can see the lunar module make a complete pitch over. This is impossible in a normal ascent. The lunar module turns very regularly and slowly from a vertical latitude to a horizontal one along the power descent and not that fast. Then we can also see that the video taken from the lunar module and the video taken by the rover's camera are not synchronized. So the pitch over happens before in the video taken from the lunar module than in the video taken by the rover's camera. Then after an initial fall visibly due to the pitch over, the lunar module starts to show a consistent swaying move. The reason of the swaying move is that, because the ascent module was conceived in an asymmetrical way, and the engine was not imbaled, a misalignment torque was appearing as the lunar module was burning fuel, and the propellant tanks were getting progressively empty. This misalignment torque was compensated with the lateral thrusters but it was not possible to avoid a swaying move with an increasing amplitude. On the video we can see that the amplitude of the swaying move is already quite important at the end of the video, and yet the video is only a half minute long, and the power descent lasts for more than 7 minutes. So we can fear that the lunar module will not be able to go to the end of the power descent, and will end up crashing on the moon. After all we have seen, we might think that we had seen everything which could be seen in this ascent. But no. There still is something to see. Indeed in a library video of Apollo 17, in the text associated to the return to orbit, there is a link to a map of the trajectory of the ascent of the lunar module recorded. On Earth it represents 5 minutes of the ascent of the lunar module. Here is this ascent map. This ascent map has been turned if a quarter of a turn, so that the trajectory appears vertical, or almost. There is an indication of orientation on this map. The direction of the north is indicated and it shows that the lunar module was going mainly toward west and a little north. The dotted line represents the projection of the flight of the lunar module on the lunar ground. And it shows that the lunar module was going mainly toward west and a little north. So, according to the ascent map recorded on Earth, the lunar module will descend this way in the direction of west-oriented north. In all the missions the lunar module was coming from east when it landed. The lunar module always landed so that its front was in the shadow, as the sun was coming from east. It means that the front of the lunar module was facing west. In fact the sun was not exactly coming from east, but from northeast but more east than north. All along the stay of the moon the angle between the direction of the sun and the direction of the earth was getting closer to 90 degrees, which means that the sun was more and more oriented toward east, and conversely the shadows were more and more oriented toward west. NASA has made a very neat panoramic of the site of Apollo 17 with photos of the mission. The sun is visible on it, but the Earth is not, for it was too high in the sky to be present on this panoramic. However we can see the Earth on several photos, and we are able to locate it on the relief on Apollo 17. We can see it above the left of South Massif. It allows us to place it on the panoramic made by NASA. This also allows to determine the angle between the direction of the sun and the direction of the earth. Indeed, 
The total length of the panoramic represents 360 degrees so all we have to do is to measure the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Multiply this distance by 360 and divide the product by the measured total length of the panoramic. It gives an angle of 120 degrees. The sun we see on the panoramic is from a photo of the beginning of the mission. It means that the direction of the sun was making with the direction of the earth an angle of 120 degrees at the beginning of the mission. A photo taken at the end of the mission gives us the new position of the sun at the end of the mission. It allows us to place the sun on the panoramic at the end of the mission. Concerning the Earth it remains at the same position in the lunar sky or almost. It allows us to measure the angle between the direction of the Sun and the direction of the Earth at the end of the mission, by using the same method which has been previously described. Now, this angle is close to 90 degrees. It means that at the end of the Apollo 17 mission, the shadows were oriented full west. So at the end of the mission, the lunar module's shadow was oriented full west. The lunar rover's camera was looking at the back of the lunar module which means that it was looking toward west. At the end of the video of the ascent taken from the rover's camera, we see the lunar module go in the left direction of the camera's view that is full south. If we were trusting this video, and do we have a reason not to trust it? The lunar module would go in a direction which is completely wrong compared with the direction which is indicated on the ascent map, west oriented north. However, the Apollo believers are going to use the argument that this comes from the maneuvers of Fendel on the camera's hand controller. Though if it was the case it would mean that Fendel is extremely incapable, and acts completely illogically on the hand controller. However, to prevent the Apollo believers from using this argument we are going to use the video filmed by the camera of the lunar module instead. On this video we can see that the LM's shadow moves in the same direction that the LM's shadow is oriented, which means that the LM would move in the direction of west. However we don't see this shadow with enough precision to determine if this direction is west oriented north or west oriented south or even perfect west. So for the moment we can't tell if the direction of the move of the LM is compatible or not with the direction which is indicated on the ascent map. But on this video, at a moment we can see both the lander and the LM shadow, and this very interesting, for it allows us to determine with a quite good precision the direction of the move, of the lunar module. How? If we join with the line the lander and the shadow of the lunar module, it gives us the direction of the move of the lunar module. We can also well see the direction of the shadow of the lunar module and we know that this direction represents west. So in conclusion the direction of the move of the lunar module is on the left, counted clockwise, of the direction of west, so in the direction of south. So according to what we see on the video taken from the lunar module, the lunar module would fly in the direction of west oriented south. So which is the good trajectory of the lunar module in its ascent. West oriented north like it is indicated on the ascent map recorded on Earth, or west oriented south, like what we see on the video filmed by the camera of the lunar module. 
but perhaps the lunar module has been able to split itself in two and go in both directions. Apollo Moon is a so magical environment.